Hello everyone, Dr. Mungli here. So in this video, I will be explaining you about gout, especially biochemistry of gout. And as I explained, so I'll be concentrating more on biochemical causes of gout, composition of the uh, crystals that are seen in gout. And also I will uh, briefly touch upon pseudo gout and uh, type of crystals that you see in uh, cystine urea. Now let's uh, move on to see biochemical causes for gout. One of the causes that I would like to explain here is a change in kinetics of PRPP synthetase enzyme. Now first you need to know what is PRPP synthetase enzyme. Now the PRPP synthetase enzyme it is involved in synthesis of PRPP and that is phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate. Now note that phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate it is a positive modulator for de novo biosynthesis of purines. It means uh, purine synthesis. Whenever PRPP synthesis uh, PRPP levels are high, so there will be increase in uh, purine synthesis in our body because PRPP act as a positive modulator on a regulated enzyme and rate limiting enzyme in uh, purine biosynthesis and that is glutamine phosphoribosyl amidotransferase. Now if there is a lowering of KM of PRPP synthetase, so if there is a decrease in KM of for PRPP synthetase enzyme, so there will be more and more PRPP synthesized from ribose 5-phosphate. Or if there is increase in Vmax of PRPP synthetase, it means a lot of PRPP synthesis can go on and that can stimulate, that can act as a positively uh, on uh, purine biosynthesis. More and more purines are synthesized and as you all know that uh, end product of purines uh, is uric acid. So uric acid levels increases leading to hyperuricemia and that can be a cause for gout. Now our second cause is glucose 6-phosphatase deficiency. Now this glucose 6-phosphatase, it's a gluconeogenic enzyme where glucose 6-phosphate is converted into glucose. This enzyme participates in gluconeogenesis and glycogen breakdown process. If there is a deficiency of glucose 6-phosphatase, the name of the disorder of this deficiency in is von Gerke disease. So in von Gerke disease where there is a deficiency of glucose 6-phosphatase, so glucose 6-phosphate accumulates and this accumulated glucose 6-phosphate will be diverted into pentose phosphate pathway producing ribose 5-phosphate and from ribose 5-phosphate so it will be going into PRPP formation. So overall again there will be more PRPP synthesized and PRPP act as a positive modulator on regulated and rate limiting enzyme of purine biosynthesis thereby more and more purines are synthesized and thereby uric acid is formed because excess purines will be degraded into uric acid. Now our third cause for hyperuricemia that can possibly lead to gout is HGPRTase absence or deficiency. HGPRTase, this is hypoxanthine guanine phosphoribosyl transferase. So hypoxanthine guanine phosphoribosyl transferase, it is an enzyme which is involved in purine salvase pathway. So this enzyme, it consumes PRPP and converts hypoxanthine into inosine monophosphate and guanine into guanosine monophosphate. So whenever there is a deficiency or absence of HGPRTase that can give rise to decrease in the consumption of PRPP. So it means PRPP levels will be increased and that increase in PRPP again that will act as a positive modulator on de novo biosynthesis of purines thereby more and more purines can be synthesized. On the other way because of the absence of or deficiency of HGPRT hypoxanthine is not converted to inosine monophosphate or guanine is not converted to guanosine monophosphate. It means hypoxanthine will go into uric acid formation, guanine will also go into uric acid formation, so that can, that can give rise to hyperuricemia. 
So absence of HGPRTAs lead to a disease called Les Nyhan syndrome. Deficiency of HGPRTAs will give rise to a disease called Kelly Siegmiller syndrome. Now our fourth cause for hyperuricemia that can possibly lead to gout is secondary to cancer chemotherapy or radiotherapy or combination of chemotherapy and radiotherapy which is called as chemo radiation. So in chemotherapy or in radiotherapy or combination of chemotherapy or radiotherapy so main thing that is targeted is cell cycle chemotherapy radiotherapy targets the cell mm -hmm. cycle it means more and more cells will be destroyed it means the nucleic acids are destroyed giving rise to increased purines and these purines will be ultimately converted into uric acid for excretion so whenever chemotherapy radiotherapy is given for cancer treatment so that can lead to increase in uric acid levels in the blood that's the cause for hyperuricemia that can possibly lead to gout now our final cause for hyperuricemia is conditions of increased cell proliferation so whenever there is increase in cell proliferation like tumors that is in cancer or a skin condition like psoriasis so in these conditions there is increased proliferation of cells accordingly there will be death of large number of cells also so whenever there is a death of large number of cells it means nucleic acid which contains purines so they will undergo degradation giving rise to excess uric acid leading to hyperuricemia so these are all the causes for hyperuricemia that can possibly lead to gout now how do you see gouty arthritis note that hyperuricemia not necessarily it can give rise to gouty arthritis although 85 to 90 percent of the patients manifesting with gout so they will show excess uric acid levels in the blood that is hyperuricemia but gout can also be manifested in patients who have normal uric acid level so for developing gouty arthritis it is not necessary that hyperuricemia should be present but majority of the cases of uh, gout gouty patients uh, gouty arthritis patients they do show hyperuricemia now the gouty arthritis it, it first affects the first metatarsophalangeal joint there will be acute inflammation of the first metatarsophalangeal joint and that is the big toe this is the important clue for gouty arthritis so usually small joints are affected in gouty arthritis here now one of the most important thing that one should do for the diagnosis to confirm the diagnosis is synovial fluid aspirate gouty arthritis should not be diagnosed based on just hyperuricemia so synovial fluid aspirate is an important diagnostic aspect for gouty arthritis so there are three things that you should look for in synovial aspirate of course you need to see for the number of cells white blood cells and all that kind of thing so but biochemically so we need to look for a uh, crystals that is uric acid crystals that you are going to see in synovial fluid and these crystals are needle shaped crystals and also the composition of the crystal is monosodium urate crystals and these crystals when observed under polarized light so it, they will show negatively negative birefringent or they are referred as negatively birefringent so the uric acid crystals in synovial fluids are needle shaped negatively birefringent and monosodium urate crystals so here is the picture to show a negatively birefringent monosodium urate crystal so that is shown here you can see the crystals are in yellow color and also in blue color crystals and they are needle shaped sharp needle shaped or tooth uh, uh, prick uh, shape sorry uh, these are the these are negatively birefringent monosodium urate crystals in synovial fluid now what is the meaning of negatively birefringent so in order to explain negatively birefringent so i would also like to explain here about the difference between gout and pseudogout in res with respect to the crystals that are seen 
So in gout, you see needle-shaped crystals, whereas in pseudo gout, which is a similar condition like that of gout, but the causes are a little different here, and the composition of the crystals are a little different, which I'm going to explain in the next slide. So here is the pseudo gout. Now the gouty arthritis so go, uh, crystals that are monosodium urate crystals, uh, which if we, if the sample synovial fluid is absorbed under polarized light. So you see, uh, and this is the direction of the polarized light here. So you see a yellow colored uh, coloration whenever these crystal, when the light is aligned parallel to the small axis of red compensator as a filter. Now it turns to blue when, uh, when it is perpendicular to the axis of polarized light. So this is the perpendicular to the axis of polarized light, so it turns blue. And if it is parallel to the axis of polarized light, it is yellow. So this kind of feature is referred as negatively birefringent feature. Now in pseudogout, so the pseudogout, so whenever the light is parallel to the axis of the red compensator, so it means crystal appears blue and when uh, it, they appear yellow when perpendicular to the polarized light and that is yellow color here. And this kind of feature we refer it as positively birefringent. So the gout or the gouty crystals they will exhibit negatively birefringence, whereas pseudo gout exhibit positively birefringent feature. Now let let's move on to see some of the differences between gout and pseudo gout. Let's look at the composition of the crystal. So the gout will have MSU crystal that is monosodium urate crystal. Whereas pseudogout will have calcium pyrophosphate uh, crystal, that is CPP, calcium pyrophosphate. Now the shape you have seen here, it is a needle shaped uh, crystal, whereas the pseudogout calcium pyrophosphate crystal is uh, rhomboidal in shape. And gout has a negatively birefringent, whereas pseudogout has positively birefringent. Most common joint affected in gout is first metatarsophalangeal joint, whereas pseudogout affects large joints like a knee joint. Since we are talking about uh, shape of uh, crystals seen in gout and pseudogout, so let me quickly give you the shape of crystals that are seen in cystinuria. Cystinuria is an autosomal recessive condition where there will be decrease in the reabsorption of cystine along with the uh, basic amino acids like lysine, arginine and uh, ornithine. So because of the excess appearance of cysteine in urine, so cysteine can crystallize, precipitate and crystals can form and you can see the cysteine crystals in urine and the shape of the cysteine crystals are hexa hexagonal crystals. So this is just to help you to know what is the shape of crystal in cysteineuria and compare that with the shape of uh, crystals that are seen in gout and uh, pseudogout, of course, those two are seen in synovial fluid, whereas cystinuria crystals are seen in uh, urine sample. Okay, so that's about it, and uh, this is all about uh, biochemical causes for gout and some of the details related with the crystals. I hope this video has helped you to understand little more on to gout, pseudogout and also of course about the shape of cystinuria crystals. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video. Till then, take care.